And we're back again. Um, I know it's only actually been about five minutes since my last blog entry, but I'm trying to catch up with you guys because, um, as far as I can remember, I think that our my last blog entry was quite some time ago, and the last one that was actually put online um, was even further back. Uh, internet's been a little hard to come by, especially when it's ten cords uh, an hour, and I only have like. 150 cords, and that's to get me through the rest of this week. So, um, and transportation costs a lot, you know, and that's one of the things that's been preventing me from being able to get online whenever I want. Uh, another thing being the fact that there's only like two or three computers, and there's plenty of people that all want to be in on those computers, so uh, that makes things a little bit difficult. Um, cannot. Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about what I have just returned from. Uh, one reason why journaling was also being made difficult is that I was in practicum week. Um, it was basically, <coughs> I left La Paz for a week to go to Quinotega, which is up in the mountains, um, way up in the north. Uh, it's actually kind of cold up there. I mean, not like cold, cold, but co definitely cold for Nicaragua. When you think of Nicaragua, you think in like jungle. Uh, there are pine trees, uh, and um, they say that it gets down into the upper 30s in December. Uh, so it, it, it's definitely cold for Central America. And um, basically, I was there for to work with actual teacher counterparts in the schools there, and see what actually living a volunteer lifestyle is like. Um, stayed in a hostel, first Nicaraguan hostel, um, and uh, I think it was like 100 quid a night, uh, which I think equates to about a little bit less, a, a, a little bit less than five dollars a night. So, hell yeah. Um, for like a two bed, a two bedroom and communal bath on ice cold showers. Um, let's see. The uh, the job while I was there was to work with the counterparts. I said that already. Uh, I worked with two. Um, the first one worked in one high school, and she was really awesome. Um, she spoke fairly decent English, um, she used a lot of communicative methods, um, we talked about, uh, the different kinds of, of language learning, language teaching, uh, and communicate, communicative method is the one that Peace Corps, um, wants us to use the most of. It's, uh, basically takes all the best elements of all the other different styles of language learning and combines them, in, in my opinion, that's how to best describe it. Um, lots of activities, lots of group work, lots of pair work, um, lots of real practical comprehension. It, the focus is really on comprehension, knowing what you're saying and knowing how to actually construct your own sentence um, versus memorizing grammar structures, or being able to say phrases, or things like that. The focus is really on pronunciation. Or not, not pronunciation, I didn't say that. Uh, the focus is really on comprehension. So, um, I think that that's probably the best method. And this teacher was using those methods a lot. Um, she had lots of objects. She had um, them writing it, reading it. Uh, not as much speaking, that was the only criticism I had, um, was that usually she would say something in English and ask them what did I just say in Spanish, and um, they would respond in Spanish and that was good enough for her. So when I worked with her, I told her, well let's keep a lot of what you're doing because it's really great, but let's have them, I'm going to speak to you in English and you're going to speak to me in English. And so they were really having to practice, and they were getting really good at it. And um, she really, really enjoyed the class. And um, then the second professor I worked with was the complete opposite. That's another cannon fire um, that just happens randomly around here. People just set off a gigantic explosive. 
I don't really know what it is. It's just kind of some sort of weird firework without any light. It's just, um, boom. So, that was that loud boom. Back to the story. Um, the, uh, okay, second professor. Second professor, he, uh, couldn't speak hardly a word of English. He was fairly young, probably younger than I am, and, uh, was teaching massive classes and had absolutely no real control over the classroom. It was pretty bad. I mean, that's, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be nice, but it, it, it wasn't pretty. And, um, but I taught three of his classes for him, and, um, he got to observe my teaching styles, he got to observe what it's like to have a real English focus in the classroom, and, uh, I taught two classes, um, that were about, uh, teaching clothing items, and then the youngest class, uh, was about, was learning, what were they learning? Ah, days of the week, months of the year, and those are the seventh graders, and they were having a blasty blast in that class, because they were really feeling challenged to, to speak it, to read it, to write it, to pronounce clearly, um, and they were they were just having way too much fun, and they were really learning. So I thought that was probably uh, probably the best class that I've taught so far. Um, then I got to observe a bunch of other people's classes, got to observe the other volunteers teaching, and definitely got a lot of ideas from them and how to improve my own teaching style and improve my own classroom, especially with older students when I'm working with 10th and 11th year students. Um, I think that's the oldest that I'm allowed to teach at the 11th or the, uh, the 10th years. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe a small 11th year class. But, see? Uh, bueno. I have to go. My host mom's calling me. Talk to you guys later.